In this video, I'm going to talk about and demonstrate the Fisher Hader Q test, which is a multiple comparison approach that is two step in nature. So that means you need to have a significant ANOVA and then follow it up with the Fisher Hader multiple comparison. So, as I mentioned here, it's an attractive two step multiple comparison procedure. Unfortunately, it's very rarely seen in the literature, probably exclusively because few programs actually test it. So now I have to show you how to do it in a more mechanical way with combination of Excel and SPSS. And what's attractive about the Fisher Hader is that where the Fisher LSD is limited, the protected Fisher's LSD only works with three groups. When you have more than three groups and you want to be within the same framework as the Fisher's LSD, which is a very powerful framework, relatively speaking, you could use the Fisher Hader Q test because it will keep family-wise error rate close to 0.05 even if you have more than three groups. So what you need to do is you need to first observe a statistically significant one-way between subjects ANOVA and then you can perform the multiple comparisons just like the protected Fisher's LSD. The formula to calculate the fisher hader statistic, which is actually a Q statistic in the sense that it follows the Q distribution, is mean 1 minus mean 2 divided by the mean square within divided by 2 multiplied by this sample size factor and square rooted. So the key piece of information is that you need the two means and you also need the mean square within, which is also known as the mean square error, and you get that from doing the ANOVA. So we need the means, we need the sample sizes, and we need the mean square within from the ANOVA table. And once we have those, we can go into this Excel spreadsheet that I created and that I'm going to make available with a link somewhere so that you can just download it and not have to input the formula yourself. Basically, it's the standard error that's the more complicated portion of the formula. So what I need to get is mean 1, mean 2, sample size 1, sample size 2, and mean square within. So let's actually get that from SPSS. You could use another program if you like. So in this case here, I've got accuracy dependent variable, and I've got four groups, which is based on that catch a liar research study that was published relevant to federal agents, judges, office, police officers, and clinical psychologists tested for their capacity to detect liars. So I need to go into compare means one way ANOVA, and I'm doing this to first test whether the omnibus ANOVA is statistically significant. And if it's significant, I can carry on with the postdocs. But I'm going to have to do the postdocs with that Excel spreadsheet. So what I need are the descriptives as well. There we go. And technically, this test does assume homogeneity of variance. So let's click on that. And we have homogeneity of variance assumption satisfied. So here are the means and standard deviations. And here is the mean square within and within groups is what SPSS calls it. This is the mean square. So what we need is the 234.603. So with this information, I can now calculate the Q values, which are like T values for each comparison. So let's compare first and only, I don't know if I'll do very many of these. We got federal agents versus federal judges. So 73 with a sample size of 23. So 73 and a sample size of 23. And then mean 2 is 61, let's just say 62, with a sample size of 84. 62 with a sample size of 84. So I've got my mean difference here of 11. So that's the difference between the means. And what I'm missing is the mean square within, which is going to help me calculate the standard error, the difference between two means which is within the fisher hader multiple comparison context. And I can get that right here, 234.603. 234.603. And here I get the standard error of the difference between two means for this analysis. And then I get the Q value, which is 4.315. Now, I could calculate that Q value for all the comparisons with this Excel spreadsheet. And a quick way to do it would be to push your standard error formula into, let's say, the I cal column and then have your Q as your J column. And then you could just input all the means. I didn't do that in the textbook because it got too wide. 
So I put the standard error below the mean difference because I wanted to keep the spreadsheet narrower. So let's do one more for, for exercise sake. And we can see, let's say, federal judges versus police officers. So 62. So I'm going to have to move this 62 here, which is a sample size of 84. And the second mean is police officers 50.80. Whoops. And the sample size for them is 36. And then I get a Q of 5.191. And so I would do that for all the comparisons that I want to test. And I would jot down the Q values. And then the final step is I have to convert Q to P. I have to evaluate whether this is statistically significant or not. And I'm going to do that in a separate video. At least with this video, you know how to calculate all the Q values using this Excel spreadsheet.